he expanded to the point where you had to have games on Tuesday. This is the first time that somebody who played on Tuesday has made it to Friday. And the Wolfpack saying, we want to be here tomorrow night as well. Let's see what happens. Virginia controlling the tip. Reese Beekman, the senior, just a terrific year, leading the conference in assists. And how impressive is that, given the low tempo, and I mean dead last of the nation, with which Virginia plays. Fewer possessions, but he still leads the league in assists. Well, Reese Beekman, there's an assist right there if McNeely knocks it down. And you cannot leave Isaac McNeely. We talked about it in the open. He is their best shooter. When he knocks down threes, Virginia is a different offensive team. It's a team that can struggle to score, but not as much when he's banging shots down. What has NC State done well this week to still be playing here tonight? They have gotten excellent contributions from this guy, Casey Morcel, and then Mohamed Diara has been rebounding as a foreman. He's able to switch out on guards, and Michael O'Connell has turned into a scorer in this tournament. He is 6 of 8 from 3. And he's had double-figure scoring games. Tony Bennett's won a national championship. He's also won two ACC tournament championships. Got to the final in this building in 2016. Lost to Carolina. Turnaround by D.J. Burns won't go. And a back come the Hoos. And that's going to be a wrestling match. Jordan Miner going against D.J. Burns. Miner, a guy who gave Virginia some very good minutes. Second half and overtime last night. 40 minutes wasn't enough. They needed 45 minutes before they took care of Boston College in the quarters. Got to keep an eye on McNeely. Another good read by Isaac McNeely. NC State tried to gap that screen on the baseline, so he just faded into the corner. He doesn't miss many of those. He is an excellent three-point shooter. Shoots 44% from threes, made 75 threes on the year after that first one went down. Virginia 23-9, and 13-7 and seven in the league, the three seed. A net of just 50, though, 2-6 and six in quad one. Neutral court over Florida at Clemson. They didn't do what some of the other teams in this league did. They didn't beat Carolina. They didn't beat Duke. They don't have a ton of wins that just jump off the page at you, but they have Jay won 23 times this year. They beat Florida early in the year. Only played Duke and Carolina once, which is unusual. Diara, an air ball on the three. And he's made 17 threes on the year, but that was not the best quality of shot that NC State could have gotten. They were off the first pass launching that up. Tane Murray is starting a game he's a junior starting a game for the first time in his career played very well in their regular season finale and then played very well last night against bc and tony bennett put him in the starting lineup tonight viara went flying burns backing down his man and laying it in minor is strong but is there anybody who can keep Burns from backing you down when he really wants well, to? Well, it's a choice that Tony Bennett is making. Usually in the pack line defense, Virginia will send a double team when the ball goes into the post. But D.J. Burns catches it so far off the post, they're deciding not to double from a long stretch. Beautiful pass from Beekman to Ryan Dunn for the flush. That was a little screen in that sides mover blocker offense by Ryan Dunn. And you put two on the ball, and that little pocket pass is really difficult to deal with. Gun the 6'8 sophomore from Freeport, New York. Outstanding athlete, also a member of the all-defensive team in the ACC. I think you're going to see Virginia try to run a lot of slip action off of screening. O'Connell into Diara, turns to face on McNeely. Good help by Dunn. It will stay with NC State. Now take a look at the right side of the floor here. You can see Ryan Dunn setting a little screen for Reese Beekman. Now when he sets this screen, Beekman pops out. Then when he drives it to go on the ball, that little pocket pass in between the two defenders and an easy score for one of the best defenders in the country, Ryan Dunn. DJ Horn is checked in for the Wolfpack. As Morcell knocks down the jumper as the shot clock was expiring. Horn, a fascinating guy for State, leading scorer on the team, is back from a hip injury. Didn't play Tuesday night against Louisville. They won without him. Did play the last two nights, got more and more minutes, started the second half last night. And he may not be 100%, Jay, but he's still really, really good. And they like him coming off the bench. The save at midcourt by Murray. 
And Isaac McNeely playing with an ankle injury, twisted an ankle on Tuesday. He was a game time decision for the BC game. Tipped out, done the extra pass. And now, as is always the case, Virginia not in a hurry at the offensive end of the floor. The fade screen. Murray misses the three. The tip winds up in the hands of Jordan Miner, and he lays it in. Well, Ryan Dunn able to knock that ball to Miner for the easy bucket. NC State was right there for the rebound. You just got to grab it. They split their two regular season meetings, both in January, each winning on its own home court. Virginia needed overtime to win their game. Burns again. And we'll have a Virginia foul here going against Ryan Dunn. But how do you guard DJ Burns on a back down? It's like trying to guard a dump truck when it's parking. <laughs> He's a big fella, but he's 19. They are trying to get back to the title game. They've been in the semis eight of the last 10 years. Bigger picture. Are they in? Do they need this one to get in? Joey Brackets has them last four in right now. Uh, Pitt, a very interesting team. Joe Lenardi's got them first four out. They played Carolina tough. Came up on the short end in the semifinals. Big jigsaw puzzle. Lots of moving parts. All you can worry about, winning the game you're playing. Well, that first photo in that array of that 1976 ACC tournament championship team for Virginia. What a good pass by Reese Beekman. You saw the great Gene Corrigan, former athletic director of Virginia, Notre Dame, was the commissioner of the ACC. There wasn't a better administrator in college athletics than Gene Corrigan. So tell me a little bit about the Ralph Sampson era and how one of the uh, the greatest college basketball players ever, and you played in one of those years? Uh, you overlapped by one year. I yeah, we played, right? yeah. I played against him three times, and my yeah. therapist says I don't have to talk about it anymore. <laughs> All right, so let's leave you out of it, as difficult as that is for you, and let's talk a little bit about that era of ACC basketball. I mean, that was a great Virginia team, obviously. What was it like in those days? How tough was this tournament? Well, people my age like to talk about the 80s and early 90s being the golden age of college basketball, especially in the ACC, because players like Ralph Sampson stayed for four years. Michael Jordan left early stayed for three but the league was by then fully integrated you know in the 60s it was not but just a, a magical time with so many great coaches and yep. you made all acc you were a lottery pick more teams now of course nine when you play correct eight. eight when you play 15 now and we are down to three in this year's edition with carolina awaiting the winner of this one a couple of subs in for Virginia. Andrew Rohde has checked in. Jake Groves as well, who had a very nice game for the Cavs last night of the win over BC. They had 15 points, 11 rebounds, four of them offensive rebounds. He was a huge reason that Virginia was able to get past Boston College in overtime. So at the line, Reese Beekman, the senior from Milwaukee, and what an outstanding four years he has had. Last night against BC, he didn't shoot it well. Four for 17, but 11 points, 11 assists to tie a career high, seven rebounders. He's a great defender. He played 43 of the 45 minutes, Jay, 24 hours ago. Can't believe they took him out for those two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but Reese Beekman's truly one of the great defenders in college basketball, and he's playing with another one of the truly great defenders in Ryan Dunn. I mean, if Ryan Dunn were named ACC Defensive Player of the Year, I don't think there would have been any surprise. Yeah. That those two were 1-2 yeah. in voting. So Beekman, the first guy to win it two years in a row in over a decade. Kevin Keats has brought in Ben Middlebrooks. Also, Jaden Taylor has checked back in. And this is the guy you really got to keep an eye on, DJ Horn. Diara will take another three, and this time he'll hit it. An under control three for Diara. That's his 18th three on the season. And how good was he against Duke? 16 rebounds and four blocks to go along with 14 points. And didn't he have 14 boards tonight before against Syracuse? Yeah, he's been spectacular. Rose just dribbled it into a double team, and the Middlebrooks takes it away. NC State is going to have to get things out of the second action because Virginia is so good at guarding the first. Great feed by O'Connell to Middlebrooks to send him to the free throw line. It's a good job by NC State and DJ Harn of making that little throwback and Groves has to close out with a hand up to discourage that shot. That was just a little bit too easy for Muhammad Diara.
And this has been a struggle at times for NC State, but it's really a struggle mm -hmm. for Virginia. Virginia, one of the poorest free throw shooting teams in the country. 362 teams, 354 at the Cavs. Middlebrooks at the line as Morcell checks back in. How about as NC State is trying to close out the game last night against Duke and Middlebrooks misses a dunk, hangs on the rim, and is called for a technical. So instead of getting two, they don't get any. And man, a free throw at the other end and probably took a couple of years off the light of Kevin Keats watching that. But he did tell us this morning, you know, because we won, I gave him a hug. He said, had we lost, the conversation would have been a little bit different. I love all my players. But uh, they could smile about it a little bit after. But boy, that was a moment where if you were a Wolfpack fan, I mean, you probably couldn't believe what you were seeing. Well, they were very fortunate NC State that they had the possession arrow because after hanging on the rim, it goes to the possession arrow. It wasn't just a, a basket interference call. What did you like about State the most in their win over Duke last night? Because they've got so much fight right now. And they're getting contributions. Like the contribution of Michael O'Connell has been fantastic. What a great pocket pass. And Diara muscles it up and in. Boy, the open side screen and roll. There's nobody there in the corner, so you don't have a tag defender. And that was a beautiful pass. You know, it's funny. This is a 10 seed against a 3 seed. I don't know about you. In my mind, this kind of felt like a pick em game coming in because the Wolfpack are playing so well right now. No question. And, but anytime you play against Virginia, they're so hard to play against. Kind of like quicksand. Boston College found that out in the second half. A deep, deep three around and out for Andrew Rohde, the 6'6 sophomore from Milwaukee. And as soon as that shot goes up, three Cavaliers are sprinting back. Horn. And Rohde runs down the loose ball. Virginia games, the slowest tempo in the country. Very few whistles, very few fouls, and generally quite low scoring. But really physical. This is a physical defense. Great cut. And the lay-in for McNeely. You think of him more shooting the three, but a nice cut to get a layup. It was so important to stay attached to Isaac McNeely, but he has improved as a cutter. More a catch-and-shoot guy last year. But his cutting is dangerous. Morcell, his first two years in Charlottesville. Now his third year with the Wolfpack. Middlebrooks gets it to go. Now Middlebrooks, they can come and double, but Virginia deciding against it one-on-one -on -one in the post, one of the toughest things to guard in basketball. And are the Middlebrooks minutes vital just to get Burns a little bit of rest in the fourth game in as many nights? No question. Dante Harris in the game, former Georgetown Hoya. He's from right here in Washington, D.C. McNeely open in the corner. Can't leave him. You just can't leave him. Set a little screen and then went right to the corner. There were two on the ball. You just can't afford to leave Isaac McNeely alone. 44% from three on the season and a wolf pack foul to take us into the timeout. And Middlebrook's getting it down on the inside, giving State some good minutes early on. Alabama's got a six-point lead on Florida. That game over on the SEC Network. After Tennessee lost today to Mississippi State, I heard someone say that no team has ever won the national championship when they lost in the quarterfinals of their tournament. So that that's bad news for Kentucky They're, and Tennessee. Uh, yes. <laughs> Here a 14-14 tie just past the midway point. The winner to play the Tar Heels tomorrow night. Throws with the shot fake. Shot clocks at three. Harris knows it, drives it, and blocked from behind. It's Breon Pass who made a terrific defensive play. Which the shot clock negated. A little transition opportunity. I wonder what the over under on the first transition bucket's going to be in this one. I'll give you a choice. First half or second <laughs> half? What do you think? Or there's there's door number three, which is not at all. Might be the title. Yeah. <laughs> Burns remains on the bench. Middlebrooks still in the game. Pass getting some minutes. Finds Middlebrooks, who reverses it up and in. Good play by both of them. Oh, nice. 
shot fake and drive to get in the lane by Breon Pass. You don't see Virginia give up the lane that often, but it drew help and he was able to dump it off to Middlebrooks. And he is not necessarily a guy who plays in every single game for the Wolfpack, but again, remember, fourth game in as many nights for the Pack. So maybe uh, Kevin Keats will go about his rotation just a little bit differently. Their energy looks pretty good, though. Horn! And a goaltending call. Count the basket. And there's a transition bucket. With good hands by NC State to cause that turnover. This is a very low turnover team, but Reese Beekman took it into trouble. The active hands of NC State giving them a, a rare run out against Virginia. Where one team likes to play so methodically and the other team likes to speed it up whenever they can. It's such a contrast in style. With NC State switching a lot of these exchanges, I think really good pass. Anytime you curl that action, if you put two on the ball, they're going to find the screener. But I think slips are going to be open for Virginia off that action. With switching, you can slip it, but you can also screen your own man. Which makes it difficult for the switch. Good pass. Taylor finds Middlebrooks, and what a night Ben Middlebrooks is having so far. Well, Virginia is getting beat on some of that open side pick and roll. And usually there's someone there in the middle of the lane. Isaac McNeely needs to stop and be there. Ryan Dunn not there either. That's just way too easy after the screen because there's nobody there in that right corner. That's awfully difficult to guard to pick up that roll man. And again, these Middlebrooks minutes are vital for State. D.J. Burns is not a 32-34 minute a game guy. Certainly not with the fourth game in as many days. Jaden Taylor putting good pressure on the ball. Rhodes. Knocks it down and gets the Hoos back within two. Well, he can really shoot. It shoots about 48% from three. That's his 49th three of the season. Two years at Eastern Washington, two at Oklahoma now, spending his last year in Charlottesville. That Groves played with his brother Tanner Groves at Eastern Washington. Tanner was the Big Sky player of the year. What a beautiful pass to Ben Middlebrooks. They are really moving the ball well. And they're doing a good job of rolling off those screens and finding openings. It is really difficult to complete those passes against Virginia. This is one of the best defensive teams in the country. Top scoring defense in the ACC. Pass deflected, Dunn tips it out to Beekman. And Stein for the rebound is Pass, who's giving State some energetic minutes. Beekman just a 33% three-point shooter. Middlebrooks, here comes the help. And that pass was in the air a long time, and it's deflected out of bounds to Virginia. Uh, Reese Beekman leads the ACC in assists. He's second in steals in this league. Now, they're an original member, of course, but they've won 10 of them. But none since 1987, and Jay have not been to the championship game even since 2007. This would mean a lot for this program if they could win this game tonight. No question. And a proud NC State tradition started by Everett Case back when they played the ACC tournament at Reynolds Coliseum. DJ Burns back in for State. Jordan Miner back in for Virginia. Reese Beekman knocks it down. Beekman now with four points. He's also got four assists already in this game. Virginia back within two. Just played with great pace coming off that screen. Got Jaden Taylor on his backside. Just kept him in jail. NC State has executed very well in the half court. They're finding the roll man and pick and roll action and so far, Virginia deciding not to double the post. Look at that screen. Wow. My goodness. That was like running into the Lincoln Memorial team. Yeah. Right. He got up about as quickly as he went down, but he went down hard after getting run into by D.J. Burns. Talk about the immovable object. Huh.
Beekman using a screen from Miner, who can't get it to go. And it belongs to O'Connell and State. And Miner's got to knock that down. They're looking to attack DJ Burns when they can in that screening action. Make him defend and recover. Everything revolves around Burns when he's in the game. A ton of post touches. They're not doubling. And a foul is called on Minor. That looked like more of an offensive discard from D.J. Burns. He pushed off with that right arm. Now watch a push off here. And that is, that's a foul on Minor. Tony Bennett was begging for an explanation. Look where Burns has to get it, all the way deep in the corner. Trying to work his way in. The lefty up and in. How do you stop that? It's like trying to guard a taxi cab. And as you said, the decision is, do you let him get his? Or do you double him, but he's a good passer, and then you open yourself up to being vulnerable to three? That's the problem. Is you, It takes him a while to get that shot off, so there's time coming off the clock. But it makes the other guys stand around. And so you're not having D.J. Horn launch threes, and D.J. Horn has made 91 threes on the year. Jaden Taylor. A little bit short, tipped out, and Beekman's got it for Virginia. One of the advantages that Virginia has, they play in close games all the time. Yeah, they've had a lot of narrow victories. They've gone on the road a lot this year and kind of gotten blown out, but their wins have been very close. So they're not they're not phased by having to execute in late games. That's just where they live. They did it last night against BC in the quarters. Probably why Tony Bennett has some gray hairs, but I'm jealous anyway. Yes, as we pointed out to him at shoot around today, hard for you and I to have any empathy. <laughs> we would trade places in a heartbeat. Four point lead state, four minutes to go, first half. Diara called for the foul. Beat Louisville Tuesday, beat Syracuse Wednesday, beat Duke last night. Virginia needed overtime to beat BC last night. And right now, Dan, NC State has been executing very well on the offensive end. The pack shooting 58%, and they've got 18 points in the paint. That second action is getting Ben Middlebrooks free. McNeely misses the step in jumper, Burns saves it. You mentioned it, O'Connell has broken out offensively. He only averages about five points per game, but he's been in double figures in all three games in this tournament, 16, 16, and 12. Yeah, he scored 44 points. He's 14 of 22 from the field in the tournament, six of eight from three. And he made seven threes in the prior 17 games coming into Washington, D.C. Drag transfer from Stanford. Pass knocked away. Miners got it for Virginia. O'Connell threw that pass to Diara instead of away from the defense, and Miner was able to take that away. He got a pass away from the defense. Miner the screen. Beekman the three. And it's a one point game. It's too easy. Horn had to go under instead of chasing Beekman over and inside of that three point line. That is the fourth three of the night for the Hoos. State's only got one. Now watch this pass into Muhammad Diara. The pass went right to him instead of throwing it away from the defense. You have to throw it to his right hand. And then watch DJ Horn here going under the screen. Got caught up on Miner. And that just gave an easy three to Reese Beekman. Morcell, that's a tough shot. It rattles out. And it'll be Virginia ball with a chance to take the lead. Lots of fans from both schools here. Now Virginia is the closest, about two and a half hours away. Raleigh's about four, four and a half hours away. 
And so great representation for everybody still going here to the ACC as Beekman gets it done again. So patient coming off that ball screen just off the left elbow. He got D.J. Horn caught up on it. And instead of blasting off of it, Horn goes over this one. And he goes, instead of, he just kind of plays with it a little bit, backs up, and then goes right at D.J. Burns, who's not necessarily going to jump. He just reached in. Really expert use of the screen and roll by Reese Beekman. Now Ben Middlebrooks comes back in the game. Middlebrooks has been really good as a pick and roll roller. He's got 10 points. He's 4 of 4 from the field. Just the first on Burns, but he sits. Moselle can't get into the paint. I used to say that playing against Virginia was like being at a two-hour dental appointment. The dentist got really upset with me. Yeah. <laughs> Dang tall, my O'Connell. Yeah, he's having himself quite a tournament. But now I refer to playing against Virginia as like being in quicksand. You can move around at first, but sooner or later, you're going to yeah. be up to your neck. Yep. Tied at 27. Beat it again. Minor. And a jump ball is the call. And the possession arrow will give it to the Wolfpack. That was a foul on Diara. Watch this. Like, this is not legal guarding position. That's a foul. So the tie-up was actually Middlebrooks down low, but that was after Diara went flying. Connell tries to turn the corner. McNeely stays in front of him. Final minute of the first half. How do you get away from Reese Beekman? Blocked by Dunn, one of the better shot blockers in the ACC. Got to get it up. O'Connell knows it. Shot clock violation. One of the Who's fans' favorite things. They didn't call it. No, shot they didn't call it. They kept it live. Heard the horn, but they kept it going. Here comes McNeely. So good off those curls. Little fade screen. Well defended by Diara. Brody in the corner misses the three. It's tipped by Dunn, and Miner lays it in. Marcel was trying to block out Dunn, and Dunn was just able to get a hand on it. So did Marcel, but it went right to Miner for an easy bucket. A good block out. But just a, a heady play by Ryan Dunn. And a timeout with 20 seconds to go here in a two-point game in semifinal number two. They beat Louisville Tuesday, beat Syracuse Wednesday, beat Duke last night. Virginia needed overtime to beat BC last night. And right now, Dan... NC State has been executing very well on the offensive end. The pack shooting 58%, and they've got 18 points in the paint. That second action is getting Ben Middlebrooks free. McNeely misses the step in jumper, Burns saves it. You mentioned it, O'Connell has broken out offensively. He only averages about five points per game, but he's been in double figures in all three games in this tournament, 16, 16, and 12. Yeah, he scored 44 points. He's 14 of 22 from the field in the tournament, six of eight from three. And he made seven threes in the prior 17 games coming into Washington, D.C. Grad transfer from Stanford. Pass knocked away. Miners got it for Virginia. O'Connell threw that pass to Diara instead of away from the defense, and Miner was able to take that away. You got a pass away from the defense. Miner the screen. Beekman the three. And it's a one point game. It's too easy. Horn had to go under instead of chasing Beekman over and inside of that three point line. That is the fourth three of the night for the Hoos. State's only got one. Now watch this pass into Muhammad Diara. The pass went right to him instead of throwing it away from the defense. You have to throw it to his right hand. And then watch 
DJ Horn here going under the screen, got caught up on Miner, and that just gave an easy three to Reese Beekman. Morcell, that's a tough shot. It rattles out, and it'll be Virginia ball with a chance to take the lead. Lots of fans from both schools here. Now Virginia is the closest, about two and a half hours away. Raleigh's about four, four and a half hours away. And so great representation for everybody still going here to the ACC as Beekman gets it done again. So patient coming off that ball screen just off the left elbow. He got DJ Horn caught up on it. And instead of blasting off of it, Horn goes over this one, and he goes instead of he just kind of plays with it a little bit, backs up, and then goes right at DJ Burns, who's not necessarily going to jump. He just reached in. Really expert use of the screen and roll by Reese Beekman. Now Ben Middlebrooks comes back in the game. Middlebrooks has been really good as a pick and roll roller. He's got 10 points. He's four of four from the field. Just the first on Burns, but he sits. Moselle can't get into the paint. I used to say that playing against Virginia was like being at a two-hour dental appointment. The dentist got really upset with me. Dang yeah. home my O'Connell. Yeah, he's having himself quite a tournament. But now I refer to playing against Virginia as like being in quicksand. You can move around at first, but sooner or later you're going to yeah. be up to your neck. Yep. Tied at 27. Beekman again. Minor. And a jump the ball. ball is the call. And the possession arrow will give it to the Wolfpack. That was a foul on Diara. Watch this. Like, this is not legal guarding position. That's a foul. So the tie up was actually Middlebrooks down low, but that was after Diara went flying. Connell tries to turn the corner. McNeely stays in front of him. Final minute of the first half. How do you get away from Reese Beekman? Blocked by Dunn, one of the better shot blockers in the ACC. Got to get it up. O'Connell knows it. Shot clock violation. One of the Who's fans' favorite things. They didn't call it. No, shot they didn't call it. They kept it live. Heard the horn, but they kept it going. Here comes McNeely. So good off those curls. Little fade screen. Well defended by Diara. Brody in the corner misses the three. It's tipped by Dunn, and Miner lays it in. Marcel was trying to block out Dunn, and Dunn was just able to get a hand on it. So did Marcel, but it went right to Miner for an easy bucket. A good block out. But just a, a heady play by Ryan Dunn. And a timeout with 20 seconds to go here in a two-point game in semifinal number two. This is a much slower paced game than we're used to. Virginia loves to drain the clock, but we need to learn how to win every kind of game. So the focus this half will be cleaning up some things like better coverage on Beekman and McNeely. They have 18 out of their 29 points. Just thank you, and again, the third game between these two. They split a pair during the regular season. DJ Horn starts the second half. We talked before the broadcast. Defender fell down. Now, Reese Beekman with an easy layup. But we talked before the game started about staying with Isaac McNeely. He had a couple open threes in that first half. That cannot happen for NC State. Virginia, the three seed, State, the 10 seed, playing its fourth game in as many nights. Here comes the double. They waited until DJ Barnes got right next to the lane. Diara with a shot clock at seven. Just a force, and it won't go. And a good defensive stand there by Virginia. Especially by Ryan Dunn. 
They did a good job of doubling as soon as DJ Burns got toward the lane. You know, as he catches it so far off the lane, that's a long distance to cover on a double team. He's such a good passer, he can find an open shooter. Great pass. Speaking of good passers, yeah, Beekman finds Minor. Here's Andrew Rohde, who didn't start the game, but he's starting the second half. Beekman, no. Dunn comes up with the loose ball, can't finish it. And Burns a one-handed rebound for State. Virginia able to keep a, a few of these rebounds alive. So the second guy winds up getting it. And off the horn, now O'Connell. And again, a touch for Burns. It always seems to start with him getting a touch. The pass. And Diara lays it in. DJ Burns, an excellent passer. He's having to go to that right hand in the, the lane. He's a left-hander, but a really nice cut by Muhammad Diar to make himself available for that layup. Burns played about 11 minutes in the first half. Middlebrook's the other nine. Well, Virginia makes you guard so many screens in this mover blocker. The big guys are screeners, and the guards are cutters. O'Connell with a steal. Didn't like the numbers, pulls it back out. So hard to get transition against. Whoa, the whoa. <laughs> O'Connell. And a minor down with it for Virginia. And Burns right now trying to dry off his hands on his shorts. Obviously, got some perspiration, and that dribble was getting way away from him to the other end. NC State doing a good job of just mucking up that screen for the screener action in the middle of the lane. And it's a fist fight to get open right now. Beekman for three, and I think O'Connell got a piece of it. And it's out of bounds. It still belongs to Virginia. Burn. So 1.2 on the shot clock, Beekman to inbound. That's a pretty good play right there, Jay. Well, you can't worry about Ryan Dunn coming off to the right side. You worry about the lob to the basket, and NC State gave up an easy one. Ryan Dunn can jump out of the gym, and you just saw evidence of that. O'Connell, offensive foul. Just lowered that left shoulder. He had the angle, didn't need to do that, just gave up the offensive foul. Here's the inbounds play, and Ryan Dunn lets that space clear, and Michael O'Connell just on the wrong side of him. You don't have to worry about him coming out to the short side and taking a jumper. You want him to do that. He's been using the screen. Extra pass from Minor to Rohde. Rebound, Diara. Good offense by Virginia, but they just can't knock down the shot. Shot goes up. Three guys are back from Virginia just so they can take away transition. Good step back. Horn can't get it to go. But you take a quick shot, then you spend 30 seconds on defense. It becomes a time of possession game. Beekman, the kick. Done, not an outside shooter. Miner swings it to Rohde. Rohde gets it back. McNeely has it blocked. And a foul called on Diara. Well, Diara got a piece of it, but his body just went into McNeely. Clean up top of one of those, you got to let him land, right? After the ball was already gone. No issue with the call, right? No. Yeah, it's a foul. There's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> And it's three free throws for McNeely. Now, Virginia is a very poor free throw shooting team. 64% as a team. McNeely is an exception. 87%. Boy, you're not a roundup guy. I got, I got 88. I round up from that 87.6. Stand by. <laughs> <laughs> you're making me look at the notes. 87.3. Oh, give him a break. 
We can round up now with the two mates. I think he's up to 88 now. Only eight for 18 last night against BC, but they won the game. Four-point lead to Virginia, a game that was tied at the half. I'll go back to some more ball screen action. Now it's two ball screens. Slip and stay by Horn. Screen by Horn. Try to get Taylor open. Viara into Middlebrooks. The double. He just fights his way through it, gets it back. And it's Virginia ball, Blake Buchanan down with it. Good stand by Buchanan. A lot of body contact, no call. Now Middlebrooks to steal. Boy, is he having a night. Ball's bouncing off of people. It's out of bounds and still belongs to the pack. 4.43 into the second half. Virginia leading by four. Including the year that the pack went on to win the national championship in 1983 NC State's won 10 of them none since 87 Virginia's won three last in 2018 Carolina's won 18 last in 2016 one of these three programs is going to win a championship here tomorrow night big bucket for DJ Horn to get state back within two strong drive Caught the ball on the left side, just put his head down, got all the way into the lane. That's not the norm going against this Virginia pack line defense. And Virginia going to more screen roll situations. Good fake. And another one by Groves. A shot fake and a pass fake, but then can't knock down the shot. And now State can tie or take the lead. But that was a smart play by Muhammad Diara just to fly at Jake Groves just to run him off that three point line. Get him inside the line. Boy, what a screen by Middlebrooks and draws the foul and Ben Middlebrooks is the best version of himself here tonight He is helping his team in every way right now. Well, he's so good running into that ball screen and then he laid out Isaac He's been active in setting screens and he rolls off those screens and you know, It's up to Virginia defense to pick up that role and it's not been as successful Ryan Dunn returns for Virginia as Blake Buchanan sits down. And as well as Middlebrooks is playing, that gives D.J. Burns more time to rest on the bench. They've been splitting the minutes pretty evenly so far tonight. And they're better defensively with Ben Middlebrooks on the floor because he is a very good pick-and-roll defender as a big guy. And Virginia's been going to a lot more screen roll action than their sides action, that move or blocker stuff. There's a screen roll up top and you've got McNeely replacing back up. Now back into their move or blocker. Beekman. Kicks to Groves, open for just a moment, left it short. And an easy uncontested rebound as Virginia was, they were all getting back. So Horn brings it down for the Wolfpack easily. Knocked out of bounds, still belongs to State. Well, we are six minutes and four seconds into the second half, and each team has scored six points. It was 29 29 at halftime. Slips, yep, slips the screen, still lots of time. Banging with Groves. Again, being very physical, but he missed it. He's just got a power right through Jake Groves. Murray off to McNeely. Back to Murray. What a challenge. Middlebrooks got him. Taylor, count it. NC State leads. Well, Taylor just went right into the chest of Isaac McNeely and backed him up just a smidge. 
for that little step back jumper. That was not an easy shot. Nothing is easy in this game. Jaden Taylor, a couple of years at Butler before coming to Raleigh, averaging about 17 points per game in his last seven. O'Connell doing a nice job of staying with McNeely, getting over those screens. You have to go over with him, chase him off the line. Open on the baseline. Beekman ties it up. Got 14, Jay. He carries a heavy load for Virginia on both ends of the floor. Second team all ACC. A lot of folks thought he would wind up in the first team with what he does at both ends. Diara. Air ball. I don't like that shot. That was not a smart shot by Mohamed Diara. He worked so hard to get the ball back. You can't just give it up with that kind of shot. He's now one for four from three. The Wolfpack one for nine. Another block by Middlebrooks. And another good job by Diara from running throws off the line. Four and a miss. Diara runs it down. O'Connell wide open. It all started with the defensive play by Middlebrooks. And you are never going to be more open than when you get an offensive rebound. Now a block called on O'Connell. Kevin Keach is stomping mad, but he's got to like what he saw the last time down the floor. They like what he saw defensively from a at seven, the NCAA women's selection special at eight in bracketology as well. Just such a great, great time of year. It feels like the college basketball season, Jay, goes so quickly. It's more of a, a sprint than a marathon at times, and now there's just so much to talk about and focus on over these next few days. A lot of decisions being made on who's in and who's out. And seeding is going to be important as well. A three for Tane Murray to tie it up. Tane Murray had 11 points against Boston College, went five of six from the field. He is a shooter that you have to make put it on the deck. O'Connell, tough one, got it back. Out of bounds, still belongs to NC State. And D.J. Burns getting back into the game after several more good minutes from Ben Middlebrooks. Meanwhile, Jordan Miner is looking over going, really? <laughs> <laughs> and the battle begins. He wants to get to the left hand. Miner won't let him, and there's a foul call. Virginia deciding not to double. They're just saying, look, we'll give you that tough two. And no, Tony Bennett doesn't want Jordan Miner to foul there. But that's better than having him kick it out for an open three or a drive of a closeout. It's not like there's any foul trouble for anybody. So if you got to foul him, it's a 66% free throw shooter. You know, to give you an idea, I mean, Jordan Miner knows where the weight room is. He is 6'8", 242, and D.J. Burns is just so huge that if he decides he's going to back you down, there's not much you can do about it. You just have to stay between him and the basket, try to make him take a tough shot without fouling. Knocks them both down. Three guards are the cutters in this mover blocker offense. The cutters are the movers, right? Yep. yep. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> That's a Dick Bennett offense. Tony Bennett's yeah. had the great coach from Wisconsin Stevens Point and University of Wisconsin, Washington State. And if you want to know about it, you can go on YouTube and you can find uh, Dick Bennett talking about it, about the whole mover blocker scheme. Miner beating Burns down the floor. Diara had to come over and help. Left gun open, but he missed the layup. Miner just waited too long. Go up right away. Just allowed the defense to recover. Horn on the drive. The floater, no. And Miner the rebound. DJ Burns looking at the official saying, I got a hit. A nice look off to Murray. Miner swings it back to Beekman. The pull up, short. 
VR has it. For a moment, it looked like NC State had a chance to run. There had been precious few transition opportunities for either team in this game. The R and no. NC State two for 12 from three-point range. And a timeout taken by taken by Tony Bennett. Two-point lead in the semifinals. Beat Louisville Tuesday, beat Syracuse Wednesday, beat Duke last night, and now they get a two-point lead on Virginia here in the semis. It used to be punch your ticket to the championship game. Now it's place your sticker. <laughs> North Carolina awaits the winner. McNeely running around a couple of screens. He's the shooter you got to keep an eye on. Once the ball's passed, you come off a fade screen. Minor double team. Morcell saves it. Really good help by DJ Horn to knock that ball away. I think that's a seventh steal that NC State's had in this game. Middlebrooks back in for Burns for the Wolfpack. Horn can't find a seam. O'Connell is open. Around and out on the three. Is always walking it up the court. The Who's and very patient, deliberate, trying to wear you down mentally and physically and get an easy look. And they do right there for Tane Murray. Just curling off that fade action on the right side. And sooner or later, all these cuts, Virginia expects to find an opening. Morcell. Knocks down the baseline jumper to put the Wolfpack back on top. Morcell had 25 against Louisville. And earlier in the year, he, he's a Virginia transfer. Mm -hmm. Two right. years in Charlottesville, third year in Raleigh. So when they run their stuff, Morcell knows what they're running. Ooh, ooh, O'Connell to reach in foul. To take us to the under eight media timeout, the KC Morcell bucket putting the Wolfpack back on top. KC Morcell. Fucking stay calm. We're in a good situation. Keep rebounding that ball, Mo. They got to be one and done. When they come off of that uh, move a blocker, you can't relax. You got to stay locked in. Okay? Every time, stay locked in. He did a good job getting a piece of that ball. You got to pressure the ball up top. Get a piece of the basketball. You know, but as a coach, you probably can't say that enough. The way Virginia tries to wear you down, you've got to stay locked in. You've got to assume you're playing 30 seconds of defense every time. Because you are. And that's where Virginia gets you, is at the end of a possession. You let up just a bit, and you're giving up a layup or an open three. Beekman's having a great night for Virginia. 14 points and 7 assists. Middlebrook's leading... NC State in scoring with 12. He's also got five rebounds and a couple of block shots. And NC State to bolster Kevin Keith's point. Their defense has been good. I mean, they've held Virginia to 36% from the floor. They've blocked seven shots in this game. And they lead by two with seven and a half to go and a spot in the championship game on the line. Dunn will hoist a three. Got metal books. Miner doing some good work on the offensive glass for the Cavs. Devin Keats not a fan of the call. 15 foul on NC State. Miner hands it right back to Beekman. McNeely gets open and knocks it down. Just faded off that screen a little bit to set his feet. It doesn't take him long. He does such a good job of going from a cut to shot preparation to the shot. His third three of the game. 
Virginia fans have gotten a lot noisier ever since that ball went in. Diara turns the corner. The force no good. And it belongs to the Hoos. Good defense by Ryan Dunn. He's so long. Seven foot wingspan. Athletic can really move his feet. As noisy as this building's been in a while. Again, using a lot of time. And again, McNeely knocks it down. Well, his movement has been so impressive the last couple of possessions. Isaac McNeely with back-to-back -back buckets to give Virginia a three-point. Taylor by 14 midway through the second half. That game is on ESPN. The winner of that one will take on the Cougs. At 6 Eastern tomorrow night on ESPN. That's right in front of our game. The Tar Heels against the winner of this one at 8.30. After seeing a couple shots go down, this is ratcheting up the Virginia defense. Tough turnaround by wow. Marcel. Wow. Well, NC State needed that one. Marcel hit a short one a few possessions ago. And that was not an easy shot, but NC State needed that to go in. It was the fade, wide open. Tane Murray. Why does it work so well, that fade screen, possession after possession? Because you're playing help side defense, all of a sudden you get hit with a weak side screen. And then the ball goes from the right side to the left. Virginia by four. Morcell. Rebound McNeely. And this is where Virginia, you can watch them get a little slip or drop it off to the big guy because you're worried about cutters. Murray. Tip into the hands of Taylor. Under five to go. Horn for three. And Beekman rips down the rebound for Virginia. NC State J now two for 15 from three point range. Big difference in this game. Virginia seven for 19. And I think you'd agree the quality of the three-pointer looks has been significantly higher for Virginia tonight. It's so hard to get good looks. Wow. McNeely again. With the clock going down over the outstretched arm of Ben Middlebrooks. Largest lead of the game. Virginia running five, taping their sticker to the championship game. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. And they'll play the winner of this one between Virginia and NC State. And this one has changed a lot in the last couple of minutes, thanks to number 11 in white, Isaac McNeely, bad ankle and all, who is now up to 18 points, four of six from three point range. Going into DJ Burns. McNeely digging down. Or minor, given as good as he gets. And Burns scores. He's got such a tough, soft touch for being such a big, strong guy. He's part force, part finesse, and he won that one to make it a five-point game. But again, remember in a Virginia game how quickly that clock runs because they use so much time every time down the floor. O'Connell trying to have to stick with McNeely. Minor got it off, couldn't hit it, and then somehow got it back, but it's out of bounds to NC State. Boy, the Wolfpack a little fortunate there. Minor almost picked it up and laid it in. NC State really needs a score here. They've worked so hard defensively. 
And as always, Burns gets a touch. Knocked out of bounds by Miner, says Roger Ayers. Reese Beekman is saying, can you review it? But you can't do that until it's two minutes or under. So it'll be Wolfpack ball. Burns again. And it's a three-point game. I still like the strategy of Tony Bennett to not send the double. Make him make a tough one that takes time off the clock. And now there's going to be more time going off the clock while Virginia takes its time to run offense. They're going to start it with a little stagger. That's ball screen. Deepman accelerates, blocked from behind by Taylor. Virginia ball with six on the shot clock. McNeely got a watch, but Ryan Dunn, there he is. Isaac McNeely taking over here in the second half. He's got 20. It's too easy. Well, he's been spectacular in the second half. And Taylor stepped out of bounds. Virginia with the ball and a five-point lead and a chance to work in under two minutes. Nearly stolen by Morsell. But Virginia gets a score here. A comeback is going to be awfully difficult. Starting with Neely in the middle of the lane for the ball screen to replace up top. Done. Lost it. Morcel. Oh. Jams it. They didn't want to give Ryan Dunn a chance to block it. So he removed all doubt. What a huge play for NC State. And it's down to three with a minute 40 to go. McNeely defended by O'Connell. Ten to shoot. Beekman, baseline, and he jams it. What a play, what a night for Reese Beekman. And a steal by Beekman, and he's fouled. Tony Bennett asking for a flavor and one because he was just grabbed there. That wasn't a play on the ball. 16 points, and for the second night in a row, Jay, Beekman has tied his career high with 11 assists. Not sure there's a player in the conference, let alone the country, that carries as big a load as Reese Beekman carries for this Virginia team. Missed them both. Interesting, he's 75%, McNeely's 87%. Oh, but not a technical, a flagrant, so he has it, right? So, yeah, foul committed on him, but it is still Virginia ball. Murray has returned for Virginia. Dunn is going to sit. You know, with Virginia being such a poor foul shooting team, NC State might want to play the foul game here. Still Virginia ball. 13 on the shot clock, 54 seconds on the game clock. And if Andrew Rohde catches the ball, you might want to drill him. Beekman gets fouled, and he'll go right back to the free throw line. One and one for Reese Beekman here. Dunn back in now for Virginia. Virginia. 
Free throw blockouts really important here for NC State. This time, Beekman knocks it down, nailing the front end. One of two, Middlebrooks the rebound, six-point game. Morcel, and he got fouled and will shoot three. Was not a good foul by a great defender in Ryan Dunn. Stopping the clock and sending an 80% free throw shooter to the line in Casey Morcel. Trying to get late pressure on him, just ticked his arm as he was going up. Clear foul. So the former Virginia Cavalier at the line for three. Take the place of Miller and Dunn for Virginia. Same five for NC State. Remember, Virginia still has three fouls to give. So they don't have to give up anything easy if NC State gets the ball back. Made them all and made it a one possession game. Here comes Diara back for the Wolfpack. Oh, that's gutsy for Casey Marcel to throw those three free throws. I want to get the hands in, or the ball into the hands of Reese Beekman first, and then Isaac McNeely. They get it to McNeely. seconds separating the game clock and the shot clock. Beekman on the drive. Rody in the corner missed it. Morcell's got it. Shot clock turned off. Timeout. Kevin Keats in NC State. Boy, and when that flagrant foul was called, it felt like it was basically... Again, O'Connell to inbound, and it's important to watch O'Connell as the inbounder as he comes back in. You can't just turn your head and let him shoot by you for an open shot. And Kevin Keats made a sub. He took Diara out. Burns is back in now after that second timeout. Horn. Can't get the shot off. Morcell gets it off. Can't hit it. McNeely's got it, and they foul him. Well, that is certainly not the shot that Kevin Keats wanted out of that timeout. But anytime they defended DJ Horn very well in that left corner, took the shot away. And yeah, Reese Beekman came over there with a high hand. And that's too big of a crowd. McNeely, 87% free throw shooter on the season, but this is one and one. And he missed it. Four seconds. O'Connell gets it off. And oh! Michael O'Connell banks in a prayer to send this game to overtime. Still has life. NC State knew they were playing four games in four nights. They didn't know it was going to be four and a half. But they've got to be so energized right now. And away we go. That O'Connell three was just the third three of the game. For NC State, the least likely to have gone down, and it did in 17 tries. Murray open. 
Rebound done. You have to be really mindful not to overhelp on Murray or McNeely. Morcell trying to make it tough on McNeely. Doesn't matter the way he's shooting the ball right now. Wow. That was big time. His fifth three, he's got 23 points. Burns. Somehow hits again. His touch is amazing. Fourteen now for DJ Burns, Virginia by one. But Miner is just picking off O'Connell every time he comes around him. Tried to do it to Horn now. Isaac McNeely doesn't need much space at all. This gave a little hesitation, step back, and just too difficult for Casey Marcel to put the brakes on and then recover to him. O'Connell on to McNeely at the moment. Beekman, the kick. Done for three from the corner, burns the rebound. Well, that's a shot that NC State doesn't mind giving up. You can help off Ryan Dunn. Burns steps out to get a touch, usually down on the block. O'Connell back to him in traffic. He lays it in, and the Wolfpack leads. Burns just set that screen and just rolled right down into the middle of the lane. Who's going to stop that? Back-to-back -back buckets for Burns. Good closeout by O'Connell. First lead in over eight minutes for the Wolfpack. Oh, it didn't last long. That's what Ryan Dunn can do as well as anybody. Talk about above the rim. My goodness. Back to Burns. He wants a whistle. Feeling he's getting pushed by Miner. Spins. Hits again. They're not going to count it. Foul before the basket. Which one? <laughs> this is pretty good theater right here, isn't it? That is a big time finish by Ryan Dunn. My goodness. So foul before the shot, and Virginia still with fouls to give. A block from behind, laid in by Diara, and State back on top. Orange drew three defenders to block that shot, opened up the offensive glass for Diara. Fourth game in four nights for the Wolfpack, as they try to pull off another win here, this time in overtime against Virginia. Good job by Morsell. Better job by Dunn, got free of Diara. And the Cavs are back on top. Well, Diara went for the steal and took himself out of the play. Again, Burns looking at the official. Again, feeling there should have been a call. That one's going to count. He is something else. That is like guarding a tank. Good grief, what a move. And you know the tank wants to get to his left hand, but that time he tricked him and spun back to his right. What an overtime for DJ Burns. NC State has to stick to Kane Murray and Isaac McNeely. Here comes Murray. Here comes Beekman. Ten to shoot. Five to shoot. Beekman forces it up. And it belongs to the Wolfpack.
Oh, what a great job by Casey Morsell. Got some help from DJ Burns to get back in front and really challenge that shot. One minute remaining in overtime. And guess who? The pass. Diara, no. Diara's got it back. Shot clock didn't reset. O'Connell on a great feed from Horn. Timeout, Tony Bennett with the Wolfpack now up by four. Well, DJ Burns is just making play after play. He's done. I mean, he's, you know, given he's fought. He's given everything that he could give. He is out of the game right now. Jake Groves has come back in. Groves is in the shoot it. This yeah. is about offense right now yeah. for Virginia. They don't have to have a three here, but they have to get something relatively quickly, which is not their MO normally, not their style. Yeah. No. Groves 48% from three. Murray can shoot. Obviously, McNeely can shoot. Groves, no. Ball's loose. And out of bounds to Virginia is the call. They will have a look at the monitor. With 26.5 seconds to go. 0.5 to go. And now they put three tenths of a second back on the clock, 26.8. You have to expect that everybody from Virginia is going to be going after the glass as well. O'Connell to the deck, corner three, no for McNeely. And now a foul. That is just the sixth team foul committed by Virginia. So in overtime here, they're not even in the one and one yet. And State will inbound it. You are at an inbound. You want to try to get it to uh, Michael O'Connell if you can. Casey Marcel, also an 80% free throw shooter. But inbounding is his number one deal. Into Horn, and he's quickly fouled. And now we will head to the line. Virginia fans, no doubt, in disbelief at the way the last minute and a half or so of regulation went. The missed free throws, and then the semi-miraculous banked-in three by Michael O'Connell. I would remove the semi from that. <laughs> Give the guy a miracle. Yes. Round up. <laughs> Round up, that's fair. <laughs> One and one. On a night where Horn has now scored five and Jaden Taylor has scored two. Two big time scores for them. They have gotten unbelievable numbers out of their two big guys, Burns and Middlebrooks. They've combined for 31 points in this game. And NC State is now up by six. No fouls, no threes for NC State. Rose for three. Diara's got it. Off the horn, another foul. And what an improbable turn of events here in Washington. Absolutely incredible. Incredible. DJ Burns said it last night, quote, we're not ready to leave just yet. Look like they maybe weren't going to have a choice. But now it looks like they're going to take on Carolina tomorrow night. This is reminiscent of the cardiac pack when Jim Valvano played the foul game back in 1983. And for those maybe not familiar with state situation, don't watch a lot of the ACC, NC State is... As far as any, but what anybody can tell, not under consideration for an at-large, but they will be alive heading into tomorrow night. And if they win tomorrow, it's a championship and it's an automatic bid. McNeely. Game over. Their fourth win in four days. And Kevin Keats and the Wolfpacker headed to the championship game to take on the Tar Heels, Mr. Billis.